Welcome one and all, I'm Decoy, back with a special episode where all of our locations are in the Cranberry Bug. You know, everybody's favorite part of the map, it has our favorite mutated monstrosity flying through the air. It's a really nice place to build a camp if you're, uh, insane. But, let's move on. The first location is probably one of my favorites mostly because of what can spawn here. Now you do get a nice little cave under the road. There's a little bit of stuff that you can pick up to loot here, but normally on the desk you have fairly good odds of finding a cap stash. And then of course you do have a Nuka Shine bottle right there, so if you are camping here, who knows what kind of drunk people are just gonna stumble into your camp and buy your stuff. You never know. We definitely have plenty of Nuka Shine floating around right now. I'm sure someone's gonna drink from the wrong punch bowl and end up at your camp. It's always nice, right? Location? It's okay, but it could definitely be better. Moving on, we have a really cool spot. Really cool. With a major downside. And this time, the downside isn't so much Scorch Beast as it is all the different enemies that will and can spawn here. Like, we got Super Mutants right there, we had Robots. At one point I traveled here and there was a, a group of Gulpers. Now, luckily one of them was a 3-star, so I, I wasn't too upset about it. But uh, all sorts of crazy enemies will spawn at this spot. Some of them will be inside this little guarded area, some of them will be outside of it. It's just gonna be a really dangerous spot to have a camp where you're probably gonna have to repair stuff fairly often. Now I did have an idea. Rather than camping down there where all the craziness happens, maybe you just go through the monorail car way down towards the end and you try to rig up a little cheat way for you to get inside the monorail using like a chair or something where you could get to the inside without having to go all the way down to where madness and mayhem is almost guaranteed I do wonder with this spot though if when Wastelanders comes out if we're gonna see it put to better use than what it is right now. Definitely a cool spot. Location, it's okay. But man, you, your visitors are going to get really annoying. As for our next location, it is also really cool. The only downside to this one is it is a set mole rat spawn point. Yes, my arch nemesis, the mole rat, hangs out here. On the plus side, they are kind of stupid, and if they chase you up the stairs too far and they jump at you to attack you or something like that, occasionally they will jump off the railing and commit suicide. Ah, good old mole rats. Now, the actual monorail car is solid. You got a, a fair amount of little junk that you can pick up. You got a couple sleeping bags. You got a med container, a radio. Not only that, there is a Nuka Shine bottle. So yet again, you can have people spawn in. One of my buddies actually has a camp here, and he's had a camp here for the longest time. And he has all of his vending machines in the monorail car. So if someone just wakes up in the monorail car, vending machines right there. I actually like that location quite a bit. He doesn't have too many problems with Scorch Beast, for the most part. But it is something you might worry about. Now we're going to move on down over by Watoga to a Brotherhood checkpoint. Brotherhood spots are very, very few and far between. This is literally one of the only Brotherhood spots that I can think of off the top of my head. Now, downside again, you're going to have enemy spawn here. I mean, it just kind of comes with the territory of Cranberry. 
some of the best spots are always going to have something. Now you do get a little bit that you can loot here. You definitely have plenty of Brotherhood stuff. I actually kind of wish we could build these little towers. I mean, we can kind of build them, but I want these towers. I want the Brotherhood ones. Then you could build your Brotherhood camp wherever. Even though I don't believe the Brotherhood should quite be here, but... If we're stuck with them, we might as well be able to build some of their stuff, right? Location, you're fairly solid. You probably don't have to worry about any Scorch Beast. Now, the next location, this is probably going to be about your best odds for not dealing with a Scorch Beast in Cranberry. And it is a cool little cave. There's not a whole lot going on with it, but it is a cave, and it's in Cranberry. Again, not a lot going on. You got a few containers that you can loot. Now you do have this lower area, and then you can jump up here to the little ledge. You might be able to do something with this. The only downside I'm really seeing is the hole in the ceiling, but you can cover that up. Now nearby here, I have seen high-level robots spawn in, so that's something to keep in mind. But overall, location-wise, it's keeping you pretty darn far away from the Fisher sites. So, honestly, it's probably your best bet for avoiding Scorch Beast, but camping in Cranberry. Now on to our final one. A spot where I see a lot of potential. Except for the part of the world it's in. Now, I do routinely see high-level enemies spawning down in the trenches down there. Now, a few of them would be walking around, maybe up around here. But I just, I don't know. I, I like the little shanty town kind of look that you could build here. I just, oh, I wish it wasn't in Cranberry where you're going to get the crap kicked out of your camp constantly. Now, you do have an actual Cranberry plant that's not diseased in the location, which... Probably going to be one of your bigger takeaways. But overall, the spot has potential. It's just a dangerous spot to build. But that's going to wrap up all the locations for this week. Don't worry, I'll be back next week for the 50th Cool and Unique Camp Location episode. As usual, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please remember to like, sub, and share. Later.